This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Hello, hello, hello! In this video, we'll take a look at how you can make organic forms with Revit or in Revit. And one thing I'll say right off the bat, right immediately, is that Revit as it is right now is incapable of making organic forms by itself. So we'll need to get a little bit of assistance or help from external programs, external sources. And this is where, well, this is where Rhino will come in. Rhino, let's let's play a little video while, while I talk. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, aware, a bridge between Revit and Rhino has been recently released, developed and released, and it enables to use both programs in tandem in a pretty nice little package. And it just kind of accentuates or elevates the strengths of both of the programs. Rhino for complex 3D modeling and Revit, of course, for design documentation as it is. And that's what we're kind of going to be exploring and doing today. And if you don't have Rhino, uh, don't worry, the, if we go here, download, you can see here that first three uh, months, first 90 days are completely free uh, for anyone to try out. And three months is a pretty long term, so uh, that should be enough for you to test out. And once you're done with the testing, if you still want to, if you like the workflow between Revit and Rhino and you still want to keep using it, then you do a one-time purchase of like a thousand bucks, I think. And by the way, the students get a 80% discount. So that's a, that's a pretty nice deal as it is. Um, anyway, I'm not trying to sell you Rhino. So um, I'm, I just want to show you the capabilities of this kind of workflow that this kind of workflow enables. So I guess let's jump right into it. Add time. Skillshare is an online learning community. They have thousands of classes covering all different types of skills and especially creative skills. They have a premium membership and this gives you an unlimited access to all of the classes. It's a great place to fuel your creativity because you can look up any class that you might be curious about or a skill that you'd like to tackle. For example, I am really bad at taking pictures and filming videos in dark high contrast setting. But at the same time, those are the type of visuals that I find most aesthetic. So I jumped on Skillshare, found a class called Fundamentals of DSLR Photography by Justin Bridges, focused up for two hours, learned a bit of German because the website decided that they need German subtitles, took some notes, and look at me now, taking pictures like a big boy cameraman that I am. So now if you look at the video description, you'll see a link. The first 1000 people to use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Add over. In Revit, I've just created a new, uh, a completely new blank project, uh, metric units and so on, um, architectural template metric units. And I have already installed Rhino and I have installed a plugin or an add-on, I guess, that's called Rhino Inside Revit. And if you just kind of do a quick Google Rhino Inside Revit, you'll find the download link very easily. So after installing Rhino and that plugin, I have this tab now that says rhino.inside and here I can um, start the, the, the program, right? Or rather I can start Rhino inside of Revit, thus the name, right? So I'll wait for the program to just load up or load in, I don't know, up or in. And once it's done, then we uh, can actually, yeah, here we go, now it's done, and then we can actually start Rhino inside. Um, so with Rhino here, I can model anything that I want, and the stuff that I have modeled here in Rhino will pop up in Revit. It's not going to be real time, we will need to do one extra step, but it's going to be pretty close. And just an example, um, a way of how you can model in Rhino is you can either do surface tools, surface-based modeling, or you can do sub-D tools. 
subd tools is something that constantly smooths uh, the geometry that you're making with a very precise set of rules and it's a little bit different from what you're used to as a revit user but basically if i were just to take let's say a box and this is by the way not going to be a tutorial on how you model in rhino if you want that i will leave a few links in the description as to you know my other courses with that purely focus on sub -D modeling but just as a quick little example of what you can achieve um i perhaps let's do that uh, i will just kind of squish it like so um, then perhaps we extrude a little bit leg here, a little bit of a leg here. Um, let's just make a copy. Just give me a second. Ah, I need to snap to correct, correct points as per usual. Get that out of there. Take these two. Bridge between them. Then we have some sort of a quick little form as i press the tab button you can see that it smooths out and the way it works is pretty um intuitive once you get the hang of it uh the further the edges are away from each other the more it's gonna smooth so the more edges you have the sharper the corner is gonna get so if i do a bevel like so let's give it just one segment again not a modeling tutorial so i'm going to finish this real quick you can see that now this area becomes much much sharper and you know you can you can start really doing a lot of crazy crazy weird things with this but we don't we will not so um i guess this is good enough good enough of a test area we will be moving on to an actual architectural piece that i've modeled for this particular um, tutorial uh, but before we do that i'll just explain it on a very simplistic uh, form right here uh, by the way i didn't model this according to any kind of a size so i want to actually scale this let me just quickly do a bounding box and just scale and i'll just say between these two points i want 10,000 millimeters Okay, so I modeled a very, very large object before. <laughs> That's fine. Something like that. Okay, so let's say we have this object. How do we get it in inside of Revit? Well, for that, you do need to use, uh, like a, not an add-on, but a part of Rhino that's called Grasshopper. And Grasshopper is like a node-based, almost scripting type of a thing, like visual scripting. Uh, type of an add-on you can access it by clicking this icon right here grasshopper it opens up this menu or not a menu but th this window and in this window you can kind of reference in things and um, link things from revit or from rhino and get them inside of revit so i have a whole course that explains you how to do it and you can um find it again video description i'll link all of the resources there so you can follow along that course i will not be explaining this part as well <laughs> unfortunately but i will be explaining a few things that i do in grasshopper later on so don't you worry this is not just going to be a showcase it's going to be an actual tutorial once we get and after once we get over the first hump so let's do um sub d because this is a sub D. Right click, set one sub D and reference it in. I'll just do that so that it's easier for you. Sub D. And you don't need to follow along this, uh, this part because I'm just explaining it. Um, or I'm just showcasing it. Uh, then from sub D we create a B rep and from B rep we will do a direct shape. So where is it? human uh right Re revit there we go revit direct shape add geometry direct shape just like that at this point i can just minimize this or make this a little bit smaller and let's go to a site plan so that it pops up in the in here and then uh, geometry b rep goes into ge geometry right here 
and as you can see well this is complaining it's fine but we get our shape in here let's create a 3d view so that i can show you better view uh 3d view there we go there's our little shape you can see that uh revit has it struggles a little bit trying to kind of um draw uh curvilinear shapes but that's fine we i have a i have a an approach that will fix it if your nodes struggle always click on this red icon right here in the top and it's going to say what's the problem it's using sat that's fine uh it's this is just an information thing because it's white the red one is where it's making an error brep builder cannot assign edge geometry to edge 17. usually that happens because it's bugging out so try disconnecting and reconnecting again control disconnects and you just can uh, reconnect the wire again and then it's uh happy uh so it's it's a weird uh it's still young let's say it like that the add-on is still young but this works and uh this is how you get uh organic forms into uh revit i guess that's the end of the, the tutorial well not really uh because i have a yeah uh, you'll you'll see by the length of the video right it's not the end of the tutorial we're just beginning so now i have like a workflow a pretty pretty kind of straightforward workflow i do something with sub d in in rhino i convert it into a boundary representation or a surface based model and then i create a geometry from it okay what about it well i can uh, just one second so i can do uh, a lot of very um kind of weird things in between here you know once i have it as a b rep or even between here when i have it as sub d and i uh, convert it into a b rep i can do a lot of crazy stuff with grasshopper here right for instance i can make it into a structural piece not for this video it's going to be for the future video but um, for this video, perhaps we'll work on paneling, for instance, of this particular sub -D and make it a little bit more realistic um, in this setting. So what I've done is let's close that actually close that close that. I uh, delete that and let's open up a example or tutorial uh, file that I have made you don't need to have something you know this fancy you can just kind of continue working on a very simplistic sub d um, by the way if you want these files all of the files are available for the patreon supporters so check again a link in the video description below and if you're a patreon supporter you get all of the files here but again you don't need these files to be able to follow along with the tutorial uh, i just think i need to say this this file contains um, basically three things, honestly. The sub D object. And you can see there's inside modeled out and it's it's nothing fancy. You know, it's just um, you can even see the base of it. You know, this is what we had before. So I was kind of starting to model out the sub D object as I was explaining it. Um, it's just more stuff right it, it's more detailed and then we have some sort of a soviet union bo boring building block that you probably should model out in revit but since i was working on this in rhino i just kind of quickly slapped a few boxes together uh this part doesn't matter at all um third one that i have is a layer called only outer and it's only the the same sub d but it's only the exterior faces of of this whole uh, form and the reason why i'm using only the exterior faces here is because i will want to have like two layers of paneling one for the volume itself and one on the outside that's like almost armor-esque thing so we're going for this kind of a Libius Woods meets Mad Architects aesthetic sci-fi stuff. We'll see. We'll see how it looks like. I have no idea if it's going to look cool or not. But either way, for some reason, this one is still uh, being pushed. Oops. 
this one is still being pushed in uh so what's up with that i assume if i here type in grasshopper hmm. oh that's because it's pinned okay so let's let's get rid of this let's unpin this and just delete and now it's gone right so once you close grasshopper the elements that you have in revit they don't disappear right so you need to kind of delete them and if you want to or if you don't want to delete them just keep them but in that case i wanted to um get rid of them so let's import stuff that i have done here that i have modeled here in rhino so first thing is our buildings the you know just the surrounding buildings so let me do bifocals and I'll reference them in a series of B-Reps because that's what they are. Set multiple B-Reps, select all of them, enter, and now they're here. And I'll use, again, a direct shape, direct shape, can't find, a geometry direct shape, there we go. That's my geometry. And that's a very, very straightforward import but that's boring right we are, we care about the soft stuff we don't care about this and i'll just name it uh, surrounding uh, whatever surrounding that's the name of them okay so that's done i'm just hiding this don't care about that we have them here now which is nice because now i can kind of control the the levels and i can kind of move them around so that they're um in the correct Kind of size. I should only use one level, I guess. Oh, that's level two. I don't need level two right now. Only level one. Yeah, sure. That that's fine. So we have level. Then let's get um let's get the sub D in. And instead of just referencing in the sub D, because again we can do it really, really quickly. Sub D, right click. Set one sub D, my form, um, convert it into a B rep. It doesn't like if you just directly try to push the sub D geometry into Revit. Revit kind of freaks out and doesn't understand what the hell is a sub D geometry. Um, so it's better to push it through this B rep component here uh, so that it at least understands that it's, oh, okay, so it's a solid. Um, and then we do direct shape, a geometry direct shape, connect there, wait for it. It's a heavy boy, so it takes a while, but it, you know, it pops up. It looks ugly. It looks real ugly. So we need to actually kind of work on it a bit more. And also for some reason, it's now lagging out, which is always fun. I love it. Uh, there is a, still a bug that I keep talking about in Revit uh, where um, if you are recording your screen oh, no, it's, it's alive if you are recording your screen um, and you are parsing geometry through for some reason uh, the graphics card just gets hammered by Revit I have no idea what's up with that but it's a thing that hopefully it's going to be fixed soon but if you're not a YouTuber, you shouldn't be worried about that. Either way, uh, we don't like this. We want to disconnect it and we don't want to see it ever again. <laughs> Instead, we're going to create panels. And for that, I will not be looking at uh, Revit just yet. I will be, be only looking in Rhino and I'll be working with the sub D, not the B-Rep, the sub D, to create panels from this bad boy. How do we do that? Well, there's so many ways. One way is if we just uh, go to surface, sub D, mesh from sub D, this, uh, this one right here, and we say that the degrees of divisions, well, right now it's set to two, which makes it so that there's too many um, panels here. <clears throat> so I'll say degree is actually one. You just double click and type in one, right? And you get the slider saying one. Okay, so that's pretty low resolution, but that, that should do the trick, right? Because in reality, you wouldn't have like insane amount of panels. So degree one, uh, then we can get uh, the 
polylines, the outer boundaries of each panel. Uh, boundary. Face boundaries. There we go. These bad boys right here. Let's hide the mesh. I click the scroll wheel to hide stuff, by the way. A scroll wheel and a blindfolded guy. Uh, so we get these kind of outlines here. Uh, so a, like a polyline for each panel. Then I want to make these polylines a little bit smaller. Just a tiny bit smaller, perhaps. Maybe not. We could keep them as they are. Well, for now, let's keep them as they are, actually. Because I just want to see how, how it's going to look like. Because this is the skin portion of it, right? Um, so, for the boundaries, um, let's get all of the discontinuities. Discontinuities, basically corners. Right, you can see that it spits out, discontinuity spits out the corner points of each panel. And the way sub D works, if you have at least one subdivision, so if this number is at least one, you can be damn well sure that every single polygon that you have here is going to be a quad. Quad. Like a four points. It's always going to be rectangular. Like it will always have four points. So there's always going to be for every polyline four corner points and from those four corner points we can build up a surface so let's do that um, list item to separate them out bam and then one two three as you zoom into list item you can click the plus sign to spit out more output so this is like point number one point number two point number three point number four for every separate polyline and then you can use um how is it called like four point surface something like that yeah four point surface so guess what happens just like that right for from four points of the polyline we create a surface from four points so now we have a crap ton of surfaces that are all in their own little branch, which is useless for us. So I'm going to, well, they don't see each other. And by branch, I mean data branch. Sorry, I'm backtracking now. Um, so what, since this is like dashed lines, not straight lines, I know for a fact that it spits out multiple branches. And it makes sense because uh, the collection of four points is in its own little list. So it's a list of lists of points, which makes it so that it's a list of lists of surfaces. So we need to force all of the surfaces to be in one list and then to be able to join them up into one poly surface. If this doesn't make sense, I am sorry. Grasshopper is not easy <laughs> and also not easy to explain anyway. Uh, what I did here was I right clicked on the S output and I chose to flatten. It forces everything into one big happy family in one list. After doing so, I can do BREP join. So BREP is the same as poly surface or a solid, right? Um, so boundary representation. BREP join joins everything up into one closed BREP. And then we just use the, where's our add geometry, direct shape, like that. Wait for it for a second. It's complaining again. I assume that if we disconnect and reconnect, now it's not complaining. I have no idea why it does that. But either way, now this looks much more convincing, right? Because every, almost every, why? Hmm. That's weird. It should be um, divided up here, but if it's not, that's actually fine. It's okay. Um, so this is much more divided up here as well. Also, there's a little bit of a hiccup there. Um, it's much more divided up, but hey, it's, if it works, it works. So we have this done. We will work on this a little bit more. But before we do, I want an external 
shielding thing, an external, an additional layer on top of what I already have. So this is where, and let's say this is like the inner skin. And this is where the outer skin layer, only outer, where this comes in. You know, this, this mesh. Let me hide everything to show it better. Like that. So it doesn't have any anything happening on the inside. This is just the outer envelope. I'll reference it in as well as a sub D. Set one. I'll uh, hide it in the layer view thing. So now we have it like so. How do we make it like nice? Maybe something like that will do the trick. Yeah, something like that. And I'm just going to work on it here. So the, the start of it is the same. We go to surface, sub D, mesh from sub D, like that. And we connect degree one. So same degree of um, divisions, right? But then I will use mesh offset or offset mesh. Wait, is this one? Yeah, this one belongs to Pufferfish plugin. So if you don't have this plugin for this add-on for Grasshopper, you can very easily get it from foodforrhino.com. Um, food for rhino.com a free uh, plugin in a free website that um, just enables you to do much more stuff with geometry and meshes a very powerful tool so uh, i trust you you're, you're you're a big boy or girl you'll figure out how to download plugins right anyway we have the mesh um which gets offset here and then the offset distance, let's say, that's the distance, let's say um, 200 millimeters. So 20 centimeters away, you can see how thicker it got, right? So 20 centimeters uh, away from the original. And then for the final input, create solid, I want this to be false. I want it to be um, two walls, kind of. Wait, do I want it to be two walls? No, I want it to be one wall. So if, if we choose to create solid, no, then it's only going to kind of move it away. So for this, we use a toggle, Boolean toggle, false. Now it's, uh, and I hide everything here. And uh, now it's a single skin that has been offset from the original. So it's a, just a thicker boy, right? Without any actual thickness, it's still a, infinitely thin shell it's just away uh, from the original form so now i can do face boundary just like we did before to get the pole lines out then for those boundaries i actually want to scale them down i want to make them smaller so i'll just use scale uh, the geometry that we're scaling is, are the boundaries the center point of the scaling should be the center point of the boundary so polygon center so we get the polygon center in here and the factor uh something very close to one but not really one 0 0.95 0 0.95 something like that so you can see there there are gaps now between the panels i think that uh makes sense you do have that tolerance gap between the panels in real life as well um after this we have all the polylines. lines let's do let's do let's do let's do um this continuity exactly the same thing as we did before but now instead of creating a surface we're going to create a mesh so we'll use construct mesh construct mesh which just uh, generates a face for every polyline a mesh face the reason why we're doing that is because now creating a thickness offsetting offset mesh offsetting the mesh is going to be much much um faster and easier uh, to do with distance of 50. so now uh we actually have boxes here right since uh solid is set to true by default you can see that the panels are actually 
um, they have thickness of 50 and they are like solid solid pieces solid boxes uh, then from these meshes we can actually get um, boundaries uh, face boundaries I like this node you can see that I'm using it a lot face boundaries we get the polylines of these meshes right six poly polylines each and then we get discontinuities of these again since all of these are kind of boxy shapes you know they're they are boxes um the discontinuities will always give us four points and we can just use this approach to create a set of b reps from them so we will do exactly that i'll repeat it just for the sake of pedagogy so that we're not copy pasting stuff um list item we use list item to separate out the four corner points i zoom in i click the plus sign three times to get every single point out right so polyline four corner points four outputs here then i use surface from four points four point surface there we go connect them like so kablamo we have <clears throat> we have surfaces everything right now is completely exploded so i need to make sure that everything is in one list right click flatten and then use brep uh, join to join everything up into series of enclosed panels it takes like 1.3 seconds that's not a big deal that's fine uh, so we have a bunch of 754 actually closed poly surfaces and then i can use you know same thing as what we're using here uh, direct shape i love that node add the di geometry direct shape bam complains that's fine we disconnect we reconnect doesn't complain i have no idea why this works anyway now we have a uh, double skin as you can see here well it's hard to see here let's go for a uh, section view i'll go to level one uh save the project sure give me a second uh rhino inside revit sub d youtube save okay so in in the plan view i just do a quick section i assume my building is going to be somewhere here we'll we'll fix the levels later on uh where's my section section uh, section tool like that just drag it out like so uh let's go to the section right here so you can see here uh, there's the there's the gap there's a little bit of intersection there i should fix that but hey it works seems seems to be okay we'll fix the hatching in a second uh, and like the line thicknesses show that it does understand that this is solid and this is solid meaning that it would hatch properly the problem is that this is a very thick boy right here so we'll need to kind of work with graphics a little bit to make it you know nicer uh, but either way this works so back in here let's play around with let's go for uh shaded view doesn't look that bad now does it let's remove some of the panels right here from brep join we have bo both of these i will random reduce just use random for this for this example from this list with it asks me how many numbers would i uh, how many elements would i like to remove well i will do a trick where we measure the length list length of the of how many elements we have and spits out 754 and i'll say i want to remove like half of them so I'll, I'll take this and I'll multiply it, this number, by 0 0.5, like this. And then connect that to the R reduction uh, input here. And then connect the L to the geometry input 
right here. And then if I look at it, it looks like that, right? So a bunch of stuff has been removed, but the grasshopper part, or sorry, the rivet part, looks like that. So it looks all funky, all weird. Maybe 200 at this point is a little bit too much because now we can really see the gap and without the structure, it looks weird. So let's go back to grasshopper right here. And instead of 200 of an offset, let's do 100. Wait for it. Bam. Now it's closer. Now it's nicer. A, a tight, tight fit. Okay. So we're, we're getting there, right? We're getting there. Uh, in terms of uh, the materials that are shown, oh, and this is complaining, disconnect, reconnect, and it's going to stop complaining. <laughs> in terms of materials shown, you can do um, under Revit uh, material, you can convert material like that. Oops, that was a mistake. Convert material, and you can use a color swatch to choose any material you want. So here it's white. I will just choose... Uh, perhaps we we do use i can use like green for now just to show it better uh, uh with like a reduced um transparency so alpha is dropped down and honestly let let's move move it back into so let's do black hell yeah well that's a little bit too much something like that so it's a little bit on the weird side now all right, so we have ourselves a bunch of panels. Um, there are, of course, things that I want to do with this. And uh, let's do one more thing, and then we will uh, we will finish this up, right? So here, um, if I were to go to visibility and graphics, and all of these import as generic models, by the way. If you don't want it to import as generic model, I should have mentioned this earlier. Uh, you you can choose any kind of category in here. So I can do uh, direct shape, direct shape categories like that. And I can say that my, um, let's say my outer panels here import as, um, what what's a good, no, let, let's go for inner, inner panels here import as 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 um glazing not glazing curtain wall curtain wall curtain wall panels like that so that's now the category which is going to import stop doing that there we go um i'll i'll show you why that matters in just a second honestly these ones sure they can import as generic models this is just to, to, to show how this works. Okay. So we save this. Uh, we don't need to save this. Let's let's jump in here and actually uh, play with visibility and graphics. So in this section view, I can go for uh, not walls. Generic gen generic models, and whenever they are cut they will be solid color or solid fill black apply you know everything gets black the panels as they're being cut are black then i can go for the glazing wherever that one is uh curtain wall curtain panels there we go as they're being cut they are again pattern solid fill dark gray let's say apply you know you get that then let's say projection of the surface they are transparent right so i'm just going to increase transparency of them to 40 percent apply and now they show stuff behind them so this is the weird part which which i don't really understand is why does transparency of the projection also influence the cut pattern uh, is it because we need the background color also to be like a, you know, do we need both of the colors to be there? No, 
so this is weird. I find this this to be as you're cutting it shouldn't be transparent, but hey, it is what it is. Anyway, uh, so now back in here, I don't like uh, the fact that uh, like this is so solid, right? So we need to separate it out and this is going to be the last thing that I do. Um, so here, whenever we are creating these panels, I will honestly just kind of borrow the script that we have here, right? And place it in between uh, this area, except that I will not be using an offset, right? So it stays where, where it is, the initial skin stays where it is. So it's not being offset, but we do create um, like a mesh face for every panel and every mesh face gets offsetted and then every uh, offset boundary gets a surface made out of it and the b-reps are generated so technically we won't need this portion right i will just borrow well that copy Control c Control v drag it all the way up here like that this is not necessary we just do that give it a second it needs to think there we go it finished thinking because this one it, it it had to um or actually sorry about that this one uh is a little bit trickier is going to be a bit trickier and um since i don't want to work with uh, or i don't want to explain too much about the data structures and whatnot i will kind of glance over it sorry but if you were to so this is what we have flattened version of it right so unflatten it right click unflatten like that so it's it's how you know the original state of it and instead choose to simplify right click simplify so this will tell me yeah, we have 1717 panels and each panel contains six um, parts, you know, so six faces uh, create each panel. So I'll use a thing that's called trim tree. Again, I'm not explaining this portion. I'm sorry. Uh, but this should just help with brep join taking not six seconds but 1.3 seconds and then we can right click and flatten the output of the brep join the b output right here and connect the brep into the geometry input right here this will be um quite a bit heavier and as per usual we need to for some reason do it twice no actually failed to convert geometry huh which geometry i guess it's too many i guess it's complaining about something let's see let's let's see if it actually shows up uh, if, if that error actually shows up because it doesn't feel like it's it's showing up Seems okay to me And honestly in terms of right now the outer panels are transparent and the inner panels are not I want it to be reversed So I'll go back in here and this convert material color swatch we will actually be using it for the in, in, inner skin not for the outer skin so i'll just connect connect it here stop doing that <laughs> my god don't be black uh, don't, don't be red okay it's red so there is one uh uh, probably one panel that is is freaking out because it's just giving me one error usually it gives uh one error per each panel uh, which is weird that doesn't matter uh, it doesn't matter it's it's it works more than 99 percent of the time um then here we're removing half i don't want to remove half i want to remove less so point two like let's remove only 20 percent yeah, something like that. 
Yeah, I think that looks pretty sick. Hell yeah. Okay. So we have that. The section should also look pretty nice. Yep. I think for the section we can uh, change this to be pure black color. Oops. Yeah. Uh, even if it's pure black, due to transparency, it's not going to be pure black. That's fine. But yeah, we get ourselves a little, a little blobby parasite thing. And you can see, you know, I would need to rebuild the whole thing here and kind of make, make it nice. But you, you get the, the basic idea of it and how strong this kind of a connection between the two things is. I will continue working on this honestly and there's going to be one more tutorial from me uh, with this particular um, object uh, where we're going to kind of clean it up and make it a little bit closer to a proper uh, proper model but the way it is right now I think that's that's also pr pretty, pretty nice already. Um, there's going to be like a structure like an a a proper beam structure not a proper one but like a generic a generic beam structure made in between these like a thrust system and some sort of a structure that holds the the external panels in place we're going to generate all of that uh we're going to make the uh, plan views the proper sections all of that good stuff in due time it's gonna you know I need I need some time to to prepare this these these kind of things. But as it is right now, we're kind of we're kind of we're kind of done. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. Again, all of the files are in the uh, are available for the Patreon supporters. And um, yeah, hope hope you will subscribe to the channel because there are so many of you who are not subscribed and just kind of jump in watch the video jump out just subscribe do it do it right now i'll see you bye